Obviously, tough, tough game tomorrow. Very, very good team. Watching Alabama play, uh, you know, their incredible length and size at every position. Uh, really, really good uh, guard play. Uh, Lewis has had a spectacular year for a freshman. Um, you know, you know, Ingram is so tough and so physical. Um, you know, really like him. They start long and big with Herb Jones as a three, so you have a six nine three man. And an excellent uh, passer. I mean, he pushes the ball in transition, so he plays point in a lot of their sets, uh, as does Ingram. They basically have three points on one six six, one six nine, and then they space the floor well. That four man, either Mac or Norris or Reese, they come in. They all stretch the floor, which opens up drives for those guards, and they get to use their size against smaller people. Uh, and then Hall is having a great senior year. He's really, really a good player. And, um, shot blocker, uh, finisher, uh, really good player. Questions? Uh, at the free throw line, you said it several times that you like the team to. Oh, sorry. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> at the free throw line, uh, uh, had a good night there against Auburn, but throughout the season, you said you'd like to see the team get there more often. Do you, do you feel like they're they're at that point yet, or do do they need to get? Well, I mean, more? not based on the stats thus far. I mean, that last game we were. So, uh, you know, we got to get consistency. That's the whole key. There, there's a big discrepancy. Q has taken 97. I don't think anyone has taken more than – anyone else has taken more than 50. Are, are, are you looking to specific players to get to the line? Or is it more yeah, the I mean, there's one thing I talked about with Eric. I think Eric uh, Holman and Abdul. Like, Abdul had 10 attempts in the last game. That was very good. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got to get Eric there more and Reggie more. we got to get our bigs, you know, the ball more and give them a chance to score around the goal and get get fouled. And uh, in terms of, uh, you know, perimeter players, you know, uh, you know, Nick and Lamar are both capable of get, getting in there and getting fouled a little more. There's very few big men that have the type of shoot range that Eric does. Uh, when did you sense that you could get that? effort out of him, and uh, does he have the green light out there as long as he's open? Yeah, Eric's had the green light all year from three. I mean, he was our leading uh, percentage shooter from three a year ago. And it's almost become too big uh, of, uh, you know, in other words, I don't think there's been as much balance here this year in terms of inside to outside for him, in terms of, you know, him you know, getting more touches and, and playing, uh, you know, uh, with his back to basket mark. Cause even like in the last game against Auburn, we hit him one time at the high post in the first half. Nick cut baseline, and he's a good passer, and he hit Nick right away. And you got to get it in there to collapse the defense. So we have to use him to uh, run offense through there because he's a very good passer in there, as is Reggie. And you know Abdul's a solid passer. You know he's number We got to get it in there more. That's period. Over the years, y'all have had some back and forth battles with Alabama. Is there a similarity in styles between the two of you, or you know, how, what kind of style is Coach Coach Johnson's style? Well, I think there's a big NBA influence in their style in that they really try to get matchups and go where they feel they have an advantage because of the size or because of the ability of the matchup of one player onto another. Uh, I think they're playing really well. I mean, they lost a tough game at Baylor. Baylor played great. I was watching that game at one in the morning this morning uh, on the replay and um, really impressed uh, with how well they moved the ball, Alabama, how well they shared the ball. I mean, they had a great chance to win that game, uh, you know, going into a tie with six, seven minutes ago in the game at Baylor in a raucous crowd. And Baylor's, you know, playing they're really hot right now. Uh, you know, they've, they've had really good league wins recently, including one over Iowa State. Um, so, you know, they're, they're good, and, and they pound the glass. And what they've really done, more so this year than the previous uh, few years, they're really pushing the wall hard on made and missed shots. So they're trying to get more offense out of the transition game. And they're letting whoever rebounds, if it's a perimeter, it either could be Herb Jones, could be Petty, could be Ingram, obviously, you know, it's Lewis, you know, whoever gets the rebound. Uh, Avery Jr. is pushing it, and uh, really, they really are running the floor and lining up three and uh, attacking. I mean, they, they, they played really good transition offense against Kentucky, for example. It really was a big part of their win. To follow up on what you said on Eric, um, he, he, yeah, he's going to be back to the, the 
basket. He's good passer out of the lane, but he's also so good in the pick and roll game up at the top. That's why he's got so many three point attempts. How, how do you kind of balance getting him enough touches in both aspects to, to make sure that his role in the offense is as prominent as it should be? Yeah, just, uh, you know, part of it's just our team showing patience like we did the other night and getting him more touches by t taking a little more patience. Uh, and I thought we did that especially in the second half. And, you know, he, he had, you know, some, made some big plays, like the one play where he got it faced up and drove right and ended up getting a dunk uh, right down the middle of the floor. And that was a very patient play. And, uh, he didn't mean to, but he stepped on the guy's foot. That's why he, he was so open. The guy kind of stumbled because he actually stepped on his foot. Uh, but, you know, for me, I'm not worried about Eric's offense. I'm worried about his defense. You know, that's the key for him is that when we're switching things and he's matched up on guys that are stretching him out of print, he's got to be able to get out on and, 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 and run him off the three-point line. He did a great job of that against Auburn. And, you know, that, that's the consistency I'm looking for. I mean, we're talking about offense, offense, it's defense. He had four blocks in the game against Auburn. And, you know, like, he had one. You know, we were up 15. I had cut it to eight with a chance to score a layup in the last minute of the game or so, and he ran down uh, – their guard and blocked it. Uh, I think he, it was a Harper. It was a big time block and really important. He had a number of blocks where we run him off the three point line and he was blocking shots. So defensively is where I, if, you know, when I talk about Eric right now, that's what I'm most concerned with is him, because a year ago he blocked more shots than you know uh, than than he had until recently. And you know, we need him to block shots, be in a stance and uh, really play defense with a, a great sense of urgency. Go ahead, Tom. You, you mentioned you've already watched some Alabama film. I don't know if you've watched them play against Ole Miss. I think it was last mm -hmm. week. Obviously, you guys played a really tight game with Ole Miss, and then Ole Miss goes into Alabama and just gets blown out in that game. What did you see happen in that game, and what do you guys have to do for, for that not to happen? Yeah, I, I thought that uh, Alabama played great in that game. And, uh, you know, it's like... They're, they're, they're going to be hyped for us, you know, because it's a huge game for both teams. But, you know, we're a ranked team, and so, you know, the net ranking and all that stuff really helps you. And that was kind of the Ole Miss. I mean, Ole Miss is coming there as a ranked opponent with a high net ranking, and you're going to get the other team's best shot, and especially when you're on their home floor. And uh, I thought they played just incredibly hard and really were good defensively because of their length. I mean, they're a very, very good defensive team. I mean, uh, when you look at their uh, stats right here, you know, field goal percentage defense on the year, it's 44, but it's lower than that in the league. I think in the league it's 42. Now, what is Alabama's? Oh, here we go. Other side. It's uh, 43. 43. I mean, it's, and, and they're blocking shots and uh, forcing turnovers. Uh, they're they're a, a very long and athletic team. You know, Reggie was a, a big-time recruit, and we've seen flashes throughout the year, and those flashes have become more and more frequently as the season's progressed. But how high of a ceiling do, do you see for him? I think he's a double-double guy. I think that, uh, you know, he has a chance, like he was double-double in the last game, but I think he can consistently be a, a guy who can get you a double-double night in and night out. And that's my expectation for him, you know, moving forward. Anything else for Coach before we get the players in here? I'll go ahead and get to Joel. You mentioned double-double guy. Dante Hall averages a double-double in conference play and, and, and things. Is, is, when, when you game plan for a game like this, see a guy you kind of circle and, you know, he's a guy you got to stop kind of deal going in? You know what's really impressive about him? Uh, when it, this, his improvement from year to year. This is my, you know, I've been here for four years now, so I've seen him. I guess first, you know, year or two he was shooting like in, the low 50s to 40s from the foul line now, look at his 77%. I mean, he is really a good player. You know, he was a the guy they were projecting as a second rounder last year, uh, uh, late in the year, maybe the season was over, and came back. I mean, he's a guy that uh, is very impressive, and there's no question we've got to do a job with him. And he's a tough matchup because, uh, you know, he gets to the rim, you just throw it anywhere around the rim, and he's going to go get it and dunk it. I mean, he's a quick jumper, really rangy and runs the floor. So he's, he, he's a tough matchup for anybody in this league, night in and night out. Perfect. Thank you guys. We'll get the players.